He's long. He's athletic. He's technically refined. I'm not sure why he was available at number 26, but this looks like a steal. Joe Marino here from the Draft Network to talk about the New York Jets 2022 NFL Draft class. Now, this is a Jets team that's been loaded with draft capital in recent years, and they came away with several big-time additions to their roster, a developing roster, as the Jets look to become a contender in the AFC. So let's look at what this New York Jets team was able to accomplish with their first pick, number four overall, Sauce Gardner, the corner from Cincinnati. Many believed that this was the best cornerback in the draft. And I certainly believe that Sauce Gardner was the best fit for Robert Saylor's defense, where that length in zone coverage and press coverage is going to be a major asset to that defense, especially when you think about all the great receivers, not just in the AFC in general, but in the AFC East division that the Jets are going to have to deal with. I think that he has a really big opportunity to come in here and start from day one and be a much needed answer for this Jets defense that this cornerback room was a question mark entering the offseason and they've done well to address that with DJ Reed and now the addition of Sauce Gardner in the draft in year one I do believe that Sauce Gardner is going to be a starting cornerback for the New York Jets it didn't take long for the Jets to make their second pick coming in at number 10 overall Garrett Wilson, the wide receiver from Ohio State. And it's never a bad idea when you have a young quarterback going into their second year that you just pick number two overall to make sure that that quarterback has weapons. And I think with the addition of Garrett Wilson, it really rounds out this Jets wide receiver room where you've got Corey Davis, you've got Elijah Moore, you've got Braxton Berrios, a player that came on for them last year. Now you add Garrett Wilson to the mix and you can see a real theme here developing with all of these players. They're all players that have versatility to play in the slot and outside. There's a lot of collective speed here. There's a lot of run after catch ability, which really fits well with this, this offense, this style of offense that the Jets want to run. And I think these are all players that are good route runners, good separators, guys with good ball skills. And all of that's true about Garrett Wilson, who could become one of Zach Wilson's best friends. I'm sure we'll hear all about the Wilson to Wilson connection for the Jets for years to come. And in year one, I do believe that Garrett Wilson is going to be a top three receiver for this Jets offense. The Jets weren't done picking in the first round. They traded back into the first round, number 26 overall, landing Florida State edge rusher Jermaine Johnson. And let's be honest, if the Jets picked Johnson at number 10, we wouldn't have thought twice about it. They get this guy at number 26, one of my favorite players in the class altogether, a super balanced defender. He can defend the run. He can affect the quarterback. He's long. He's athletic. He's technically refined. I'm not sure why he was available at number 26, but this looks like a steal for the New York Jets. And when I think about this Jets team, I really like the overall depth of the pass rush talent that they have. Carl Lawson coming back, Quinn and Williams, Sheldon Rankin, Solomon Thomas, Jermaine Johnson, I mean, John Franklin Myers. This team is loaded with a, a number of talented defensive linemen that can get after the quarterback, and Johnson fits right into the mix. And so in year one, I'm not sure that Johnson's going to unseat John Franklin Myers or Carl Lawson as starters, but this guy's going to play a ton of snaps, and I think he has a real chance to be an impact defender for years to come for this Jets defense. In the second round, the New York Jets picked Brees Hall, running back from Iowa State. And this was a bit of a surprise because there was a lot of promise shown by Michael Carter, uh, a fourth-round pick last year as a rookie, and what he was able to get done. And you know, you kind of thought that he was going to be the lead back here, but the Jets obviously couldn't resist adding a player like Brees Hall who gives size to the running back situation. He gives receiving ability. Obviously, he's a home run threat with 4-3 speed, and you know, he pairs with Michael Carter to form a really dynamic set of running backs in terms of athleticism, creativity as a runner, and obviously both have really exciting pass catching potential. And so I didn't necessarily view this as a major need, but certainly Brees Hall can be an X factor for this offense. And you never hate to see a team invest in, in weapons for their young quarterback. And that's exactly what the Jets were able to do here with adding Brees Hall to the mix. So in year one, given this is a top 40 pick, 
I think that Brees Hall comes in and is the starting running back for the New York Jets. And, you know, Michael Carter becomes more of a complimentary option to Hall in this backfield. In the third round, the New York Jets selected Jeremy Ruckert, tight end from Ohio State. And the Jets may have had the least exciting tight end room in the NFL in 2021. That's no longer the case. This team went out and signed C.J. Uzoma. They went out and signed Tyler Conklin. And now they add Jeremy Rucker to the mix. And suddenly they've got one of the better tight end rooms in the league. A lot of veterans there and obviously a dynamic young player in Jeremy Ruckert who you're not going to be impressed with the production that he had at Ohio State. But you'll be impressed if you watch the tape and you see this guy run routes. You see this guy catch a football. You see how he blocks. You understand that he's got good size. I mean, this guy has everything necessary to be a quality tight end in the NFL. And, you know, there's a lot of developmental upside with a player like this. And you got to love that he's in a situation where he's not going to be asked to do everything right away. Tight end tends to be a slow developing position. Well, there's no stress on Rucker to come in and do anything right away. There's good players ahead of him and he can come in and be the, the backup to those players, give them good depth for their 12 personnel groupings and wind up being more of a factor in years to come. And so I love the the addition here and, and how he can help this team both short term and providing depth, but also long term as a guy that you think can be one of the top two tight ends for this offense. So in year one, probably their tight end three, but that's OK, given where he's at entering the NFL and the path forward for him to become a top two tight end in due time for this Jets offense. In the fourth round, number 111 overall, the Jets picked offensive tackle Max Mitchell out of Louisiana. And what I like about this pick is I felt like the Jets really needed to do something at this offensive tackle position. And I probably would have done it earlier in the draft, but it's good to see some help added. There's some uncertainty surrounding Mikai Becton and, you know, George Fant on an expiring contract at tackle. And so there's some short term and some long term question marks at the position. And Max Mitchell is certainly a player that gives them a chance to have a player with developmental upside that maybe in time can become an answer. And so in year one, I'm not expecting Max Mitchell to challenge for a starting role, but perhaps he can be the swing tackle. And if something goes wrong with Fant or Becton, you have an option waiting in the wings that can come in and produce. So I look at him as a developmental starter and, and potentially the swing tackle in year one. The Jets made their last pick in the fourth round, number 117 overall, defensive end Michael Clemens out of Texas A&M. And I'll tell you what, Clemens was one of my favorite sleeper prospects in this class. When you look at size, you think about athleticism, you think about length, this guy checks all the boxes. This is what you want in a mid-round developmental prospect. Some really big-time flashes in the SEC for Texas A&M. Now, look, you maybe wish that he was more impactful with consistency, and that's why a player with his tools and skill set was available on day three. But this is a worthwhile swing to add a toolsy prospect at a premium position to develop. And so in year one, you know, he's probably that fourth or fifth guy in the defensive end rotation, but he's got the type of skill set that if it all comes together, he can end up being a steal for this Jets team and, and, and potentially be one of their top three defensive ends if he were to develop. But there's a lot of exciting flashes and skill and raw ability when it comes to Michael Clemens. So that's my take on the New York Jets 2022 NFL draft class and the roles that I think they're going to fill this season. Let me know what you think in the comments and be sure to stay tuned to the Draft Network on YouTube and thedraftnetwork.com for all of your NFL, college football, and NFL draft coverage.